Jesus wants to save you. He desires to do the impossible in your life. God will bless you spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, and financially. Let's believe God together and watch the impossible happen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. And I'm so blessed to be here because I have a message from God for you. I am Dr. Ricky Branham, and I am believing for God to do the impossible. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege and opportunity that we have to come before you today. And God, we just ask you, Lord, that you would bless this message. Open up our hearts and minds, God, that we might receive your word. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. The title of my message is Pray for God's Glory. You know, oftentimes people will ask me, why did God create us? And that is very simple. We were created for the glory of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, whether therefore ye eat or ye drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Everything you do should glorify God because that is what we were created for. God created us in his image that we might glorify him. So you have to ask yourself, when it comes to the will of God, which will, is another question that people will oftentimes ask, is this the will of God? Well, obviously we know that the Bible is the revealed will of God. But you can always ask yourself this question. Does it glorify God? Because everything that God wants you to do, everything that God has called you to do, everything that is the will of God will always bring glory to him because, again, that is what we were created to do, to bring glory to God. Now, one of the ways that glory is brought to God is by him answering our prayers. Listen to this. In John 14, 13, if you're taking notes, John 14, 13, it says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Let me read that again. This is Jesus speaking, the red letters. It says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Jesus says, Whatsoever you shall ask God in my name. He says, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So it glorifies God to have your prayers answered. When your prayers are answered, it glorifies the Father. See, that's a powerful thing. When you pray with knowing that it glorifies God to answer your prayers, then that increases your faith. You know that God wants to do good things for you. You know that God desires to answer prayers. You know, oftentimes when people pray, they oftentimes think that God is, you know, you have to pray just the perfect, perfect prayer and it has to be just right and all this when the Lord says that he hears everything that we say that all we have to do is simply ask God in the name of Jesus believing and we shall receive that's why it says in Matthew 7 7 ask and ye shall receive we oftentimes make prayer too complicated when he says, think not that you're going to be heard because of your vain repetitions. That's what Jesus said in the New Testament. He said, keep it simple. Just pray simply. And he tells them and he taught them how to pray. And he made it so simple, so easy with childlike faith that even a child could do it. And why did God make it that way? Because he wants to answer our prayers that God may be glorified. But I also want to show you something from the Word of God. This is one of my favorite messages. It comes from Numbers chapter 14, starting in verse 10. It comes from Numbers chapter 14, starting in verse 10. That there is a powerful prayer, a simple, powerful prayer that deals with the glory of God that you can pray and God will answer. And I want to show you that here today. Now, if there's something that you've been praying about and God has not answered yet, it may be because it's not time. 
It doesn't mean that God does not want to answer it. Or maybe God has something better than you've been praying about. I've, I've noticed that God has always answered my prayers. But the prayers that he has not answered, it's because he has something better in store, something better in mind than I'm praying about. And thank God for that. Thank God that he knows what is, what's best for our lives. But if there's something that you've been believing for, something that you've been asking for, and it has not happened yet, I want you to pray this same prayer that Moses prayed. Listen to this. In Numbers chapter 14, starting in verse 10, it says, But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long? Will this people provoke me? And how long will it be the ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence. I will disinherit them. And I will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, But then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou broughtest up thy people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, are among thy people, that thou, Lord, are seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard of thy fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of thy Lord be great, According as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgressions, and by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and unto the fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy." And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Verse 21, listen to this. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Once again, what is your purpose? As truly as I live, that all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with the children of Israel as their God had miraculously delivered them supernaturally, powerfully. He delivered them from the hand of the Egyptians. And God was leading them into that wonderful promised land, that land that floweth with milk and with honey. And God was excited to do great things for them. He had great things in store for them. And it was going to be a wonderful, wonderful life for them. But as we know, that the children of Israel became difficult. At this time, the children of Israel, when they were being led in that wilderness, they lost hope. There was times that they would murmur and complain against God. They would murmur and they could complain against Moses. And here in this particular time, they are murmuring and complaining so much that God is upset. God is tired of it. You know, God gives us free will. God gives us choices. Yes, God has plans for our lives. And yes, there's many great things that he desires to do. But we have decisions to make. And here they were making the decision to not have faith, to not believe in the promises of God, but instead to complain about them. And here they were complaining to Moses so much that when God became upset, that God said in verse 11, he asked Moses this question, how long will this people provoke me? How long will this go on? How long should I let it go? God was getting upset and God was getting so mad that in verse 12, he says, I will smite them. I will disinherit them. 
I will get over them, Moses. I will, I will get rid of them, Moses, and I will start over. Now, Moses loved his people, and God did too, but God was tired of them, complaining God was going to allow them over to what they wanted. God was, is a perfect gentleman. He's going to give them what they wanted. Go ahead. If this is what you want, go ahead. But notice the intercessory prayer that Moses prayed for the people that reached the throne of God. And listen to what Moses prayed. And this is what I want to show you here today because this is a prayer that you need to pray. If there's something you have been waiting upon, maybe it's a loved one to be saved. Maybe it's someone that you know to be set free from addiction. Maybe it's a powerful thing that you have been praying and asking God to do in your life. Maybe you need some kind of healing touch. Maybe you need a financial miracle. Whatever it might be, listen to this prayer because Moses prayed this powerful prayer. And he said in verse 15, he says, Now, if thou shalt kill all the people as one man, he's saying, God, if you're going to kill all these people, then the nations which have heard of thy fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. He's saying, God, you will not receive glory. God, if you kill all these people, God, you're going to look bad to everyone. God, they've heard about you. They know who you are, God. They've heard about your miraculous powers, about how you appear before your people and how your mighty hand delivered them from the Egyptians. God, they know all these things. But God, if you smite them, God, if you let them all die like this, Father God, God, they're going to speak bad about you. Moses was saying, God, they're not going to glorify you. And God, I know that your plan for my life and our lives and Israel's life, Father, is I know, Father, that your plan is that we might glorify you. God, if they die, it does not glorify you. God, if bad things happen to this people, then people are going to talk about you. God, they're going to say that you're not strong enough or you're not mighty enough or you're not powerful enough. God, it will not bring you Glory. That's what Moses prayed. That's a powerful prayer. So whatever situation you're going through, sickness, illness, and disease does not bring glory to God. Struggling does not bring glory to God. Depression does not bring glory to God. Bad things happening in your life being the tail and not the head does not bring glory to God. Financially struggling, not knowing where your next meal or how you're going to pay your bills does not glorify God. Bad things does not glorify God. Let that be very clear. Bad things are from the devil. Bad things come from the enemy. The Bible says that he is a good God that there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He only does good things. God does one thing, and that is good things. That's all that God does. And he's saying, Moses said, God, if you do this, God, they're not going to believe in you. They're not going to trust in you. You're going to look bad, God. And it got the attention of God. So much that the Lord said in verse 19, or excuse me, um, verse 20. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Now notice the very next verse. Notice this, the Lord said, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. So he was saying, Moses, you're right. Moses, if I do this, people are going to speak bad about me. People are going to say that I don't have power to do that. And, and now, obviously, we know that God has all power, but, but he, God was concerned that he didn't want people to take away his glory. So sometimes we have to pray, God, if you do this, then it will glorify you. It's a prayer that I've prayed many times. God, if you heal me, God, it will glorify you. How will it glorify you, God? Because I will tell others about the testimonies that you have given me. God, I will share with others what you have done for me. It will glorify you, Father God. 
if you help my child. God, it will glorify you if you help me in my job. God, it will glorify you if you open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing like you said in Malachi, that there will be so much room that we cannot receive it. God, it will glorify you. Woo, praise the Lord, and we receive that. It will glorify you, God. God, why? Because I will tell others, Father God, about what you have done. God, I will speak of your fame, saying, look what God has done, and no one else can take credit for it, and we were created for God's glory. God has done all of this, and for him be the glory of God. See, that's why you were created. That's the prayer that Moses prayed. That's the prayer that Jesus was saying to us. Let me read that to you again on John 14, 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. It glorifies God to answer your prayers. And sometimes we have to pray that to God. God, I want to glorify you. You know, I try to get up every single day. And I try to say, God, how can I glorify you? God, I want to glorify you by walking in my calling. God, I want to glorify you, Father God, by being an example of your love, by an example of your mercy and your grace. God, I want to glorify you, God, by telling others about the testimonies of the things that you have done for me. God, I want to glorify you, God. That's why I am created. That is my purpose here on earth. My purpose is not anything else other than to glorify you, God. So tell me, God, how can I glorify you? God, give me opportunities to glorify you. And God, please answer my prayers, God. God, you see all the desires of my heart, God. And my desires are good, God, because they're from you. God, answer those desires of my heart. God, answer those prayers that I pray to you, Father, that you may be glorified, God. Oh, what a powerful prayer. When you send in prayer requests to us, I believe, God, for him to answer your prayers. Why? Because I know it glorifies him. It glorifies him. It glorifies God for great things to happen. I think about all this stuff and how the Lord has opened up so many doors for us to preach his word all over the United States and how blessed we are and how God sent just the perfect person who does all of our production and Robert Holthouse Productions and how God blessed us with the, the perfect place, how God blessed us with so many things, how he just worked everything out. Oh, I could go on and on. And I think about all that, and I think about how God brings that all together for one reason, because it glorifies God. That's the God that we serve. And someone here needs to hear that today, that it is your job to glorify God. So stop asking God if it be your will. God has already told you his will. Again, I'll tell you, if it's a good thing and it brings glory to God, it is the will of God. Stop asking God if it be your will. Just because you haven't received it doesn't mean it's not, it's not the will of God. It's just sometimes God makes you wait. Sometimes you have to be patient. Sometimes God has a, a perfect season to answer that prayer in. But you must remain in faith. And the Bible says that we will reap in due season if we faint not. So sometimes we just have to stand on the promises of God. I love that song and We've sang that song many times at our church, standing upon the promises of God. Sometimes you need to just stand on the promises of God and say, God, answer this prayer for your glory. Not for me, God. Not so that I can boast. Not so that I can brag. Not so that I can say, look at me. But so I can say, look at the God that I serve. And see, that's why I believe my favorite scripture in the entire Bible is Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I believe that God can do anything and everything. I believe that God is a great physician who specializes in the impossible. I believe that God is a mighty God who wants to do miraculous things. And the same things that he did in the Bible days is the same things that he will do today. Why? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is the living word of God. 
So God has not changed. We have changed. People have stopped asking and believing for great and mighty works. People have, uh, have, have stopped trusting that God can do those great and mighty things. Well, I'm here to tell you today. Today, believe and pray. Pray for the impossible. Pray for God to do the miraculous. Why? For the glory of God. That we might say, God, you've done this. Oh, woo, praise the Lord. I can tell you so many times about healings, miracles I've seen, cancers I've seen that God has taken away, healing of seizures, healing of brain tumors, oh, saving people from death, oh, I, delivering people. Oh, I can tell you testimony after testimony. Ain't nothing, it isn't anything that I've done. I said it ain't anything I've done. It isn't anything I've done. There we go. Say it right in proper English, right? It isn't anything that I have done. It is not of man lest it should boast. It is all about God. It is the glory of God. It is for the power of God. It's for the goodness of God. It's for the greatness of God. Again, let me read that verse as we get ready to close. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. If all the earth is to be filled with the glory of God, then I ask you that question. What is it that you have need of in your life that, God, that you need God to move upon? Ask God to do that for his glory. Tell God, say, God, I'll tell others when you come through for me, Father, I'll tell them that it was you. Now make sure if you tell God something like that, that you pray and you ask God to help you to keep your promise, help you to keep your promise to make sure you share that with others, that you do what you say you're going to do. God, if you'll answer this prayer, God, I'm telling you with your help, God, I will tell others about it, Father God. I will tell others what you have done. I love to tell about and declare God's goodness. And I also love to hear about God's goodness to others. Amen. I love to rejoice with others when God does great things. Why? We're on the same team. It doesn't matter the name above the door. All that matters is that you confess and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. That's why I've always been an interdenominational evangelist. I go and preach all over to everyone that declares that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Because when we get to heaven, all of us are going to be together as God's children, and we're going to dwell together in unity under the throne of God Almighty and Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father. Amen? Isn't that a powerful thing? So let me pray for you today. I want to pray for you that God would help you by answering your prayers that he may be glorified. Let me say that again. I want to pray that God will answer your prayers for his glory. But before we do that, the greatest way to glorify God is by confessing and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And maybe you've already done that. But if you have not done that, today is the day of salvation. If you'll pray this simple prayer with me, that comes from Romans 10, verse 9, that if thou will believe and confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe that he died on that cross, that he was raised from the dead on the third day, that you will be saved. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll pray this prayer out loud, believe it, God will save you. If you've already done that and you'd like to rededicate your life, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. And then, in just a moment, I'm going to pray for you that God will answer your prayers, that you, that God, that God will be glorified by answering your prayers. Amen? So would you pray this prayer out loud with me? The prayer of salvation. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead. And God, I confess and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I invite Jesus Christ into my heart and to my life. And I ask you, God, to forgive me of all my sins. I forgive everyone. And I ask you, God, to save me, help me, change me, and give me a home in heaven. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. 
Now I want to pray for you that God would be glorified by answering your prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, God, everyone who is watching this program, everyone who will hear this program, I am asking you, God, right now, I'm asking you, God, for the glory of God, that the earth may be filled with the glory of God. I am asking you, God, to answer our prayers. Whatever that prayer might be, God, whether it be a healing prayer, God, whether it be a, a financial miracle, whether it be to give us joy and peace and love, God, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter, God. I just ask you, God, that whatever thing that we are praying, Father God, that's according to the will of your word, God, I just ask you, God, to answer that you may be glorified, Father God. Lord, I've seen you do it so many times. Lord, I've seen you make a way where there seemeth to be no way so many times. And I'm asking you, God, to do it again here today. God, that you may be glorified. Then I ask you, Father God, when you do that, God, to help us to tell others about what you have done for us. Lord, once again, that the earth may be filled with the glory of the Lord. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in and praying for our program. Please uh, send in a message. Let us know where you're watching from. We love to hear your prayer requests and we love to, to pray for you and believe with you. We love to read your testimonies and rejoice with you. We thank you again for everything. May God bless you and we'll see you again soon. To have Ricky Branham speak at your church or ministry event, for prayer, to sow a financial seed, or for more information, please contact Ricky Branham Ministries, P.O. Box 211, Willard, Ohio, 44890. You can also do this via his website at rickybranham.com. Be sure to check out Ricky Branham Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. My name is Dr. Ricky Branham. I am a television minister, interdenominational evangelist, senior pastor, and an author who has traveled all over since the age of 16 to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. I minister to churches of all denominations that believe Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I am also the senior pastor of Ripley Chapel, a non-denominational church. The goal of Ricky Branham Ministries is to reach the lost, edify the saints, and minister to people of all ages and all walks of life for the glory of Jesus Christ. God can do the impossible, and God desires to do the impossible. Matthew 19, 26 says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Let's seek God together and watch the impossible happen. I would love to have the opportunity to share with your listeners a timely message from God. For more information, please visit my website at rickybranham.com. May God bless you.